Hi, I'm Tim Seeley, the Artistic Director. We are so happy to have you with us today for Behind the Curtain. We've been at this now for a year on SFGMC TV and couldn't be happier that after one year, we finally get Patrick Makuakane to be our guest. Kumu Patrick <laughs> Makuakane. And we'll, we will discuss what that is in just a little bit. Uh, Patrick is the founder in 1985 of Nalehulu, which is one of the world's finest hula groups. And I'll ask him to, to tell us the whole name and a little bit more about. Um, they are absolutely iconic in San Francisco and across the U.S. and even abroad because they are spectacular. We did a concert with them four years ago called Paradise Found. We're going to talk a little bit about that and about the fact that it is API uh, month and our awareness about those things. And Patrick's, I'm sure, going to help us with that as well. Welcome, Patrick. Aloha, Tim. Thank you for Aloha. having me on your show. It is a delight always to spend time with you or your um, company of men. And so thanks. My peeps. My peeps. The peeps, right. Yeah. The good peeps. As we were having a preliminary discussion, I mean, they're really good peeps. And I was saying to you how much I really enjoyed our, not really a collaboration, but we were the, your guest artists. Um, and I love being in big groups, watching other big groups behave, the dynamics of how all of that interacts with themselves and how they treat another group in their presence. Um, and your men were warm and gracious and loving, and they behave the way that I love to see my group behave. So I think there was this simpatico and this appreciation for the dynamics that each group show to one another and that comes from the top down from you from me <laughs> yeah. and so it was lovely to be in that environment uh and it, a beautiful performance that just have I, I don't know how you want to explain this but i think you should because it's real and i wanted to talk about a very important incident that happened when that gentleman it was during intermission and they had to do cpr on him and I was in the back um, and the wings watching how all his brothers had lined up to walk up the steps because after a minute of doing CPR, you're exhausted. And that love and that focus and that intention and all of that beauty amidst this like really difficult, tough stuff was just, it was painfully difficult and beautiful at the same time, just holding both and watching that happen. It was just a really difficult experience, but uh, but an enriching one, nonetheless, if I may say that. Watching how you handled the crowd and just watching how everybody backstage tried to find their way in this. It was just a, um, just a really beautiful, hard, hard moment to watch everybody push themselves through, and they did. And I, mm, tough as it was, I was grateful for the experience that I got to be with my group and that we got to love one another and say, yes. this stuff happens in real life. There it is. You know, how do we manage this? Yeah. So. Well, but going back to um, the first thing that you said, we learned so much from you all because you know it's fascinating of, of how we interacted behind stage and and with each other and the minute your dancers walk on stage that's all that that's all there is is their dance and it was remarkable it was just professionalism like that i i seldom see so we learned that from you all um at the first performance, one of our members um, passed away. We didn't know he had passed away on the risers at intermission. And we had to um, wait and kill time with the audience and uh, while the paramedics came in and as the, the guys in the chorus did CPR for quite some time. And the your troupe, oh, so we were killing time until we could find out what what was next. And um, your troop was so great because you came out and was like, we're like, well, let us dance. 
And I was like, right. oh my God. <laughs> thank you so much. And it was just those, those things that happened on the spur of the moment where everybody jumped in to, to be a family. Um, I will say that, um, hold on. I got you. Um, when we left the green room after the concert, well, after it was all over, and as we walked silently through the hall, your dancers lined the hall. <laughs> Jesus. As we were leaving the hall, um, the hula dancers in your troupe lined the hall in just reverence and unity. And it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced. So it was um, an amazing thing that four years ago, we did this collaboration on the stage together and we were in the very first of three concerts and this tragedy struck and what it did to bind us together uh, really just can't be spoken. Yes. So thank you for that. Um, talk to us about um, a little bit about API and Pacific Islanders and some of the things that you're going through. How does it affect some of your, your dancers? I mean, what is that like? Yeah, it's, you know, it's been a weird, wacky, and strangely enough, wonderful year um, for, well, the hell with the company, for myself. I've been really able to internalize and kind of shift the way I teach to focus it on in this Zoom platform. And rather than it dictate to me what I have to do, I wanted to get ahead of it and say, let's make the best out of this opportunity. What can I do here that I can't do with you when I'm in a live classroom? And so we got a a bevy of cultural practitioners from Hawaii to speak to the group. So it's cheaper than flying their asses down yeah. and setting up a hotel, right? No. And they were engaged by that um, and just allowing us a more, um, a sense of familiarity that I don't, well, you would understand this with you behind a podium and 250 guys. How do you create intimacy with that? But yes. I mean, I can look at the screen and speak to people. And you know what the best part is? I know everyone's names now. <laughs> you're not kidding because you know when you have large groups and you're you want to you love, want to learn all the names and on Zoom not only do I get to interact with you right. face to face but I can scroll over your square if I can. Yeah, I see your beautiful name, God. Debbie. All this time I think of you as the blue skirt lady, but now you have it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so, so true. So yeah. So I, I'm just trying to engage my students in, in a positive way to make this the experience we have and let's use it to our advantage. Um, but at the same time, I haven't been able to really work with the dance company for a long time and we have shows coming up and you know, as I do, it's like, I have to rehearse, I have to get there, I have to have hands-on experiences. So when that will be, I don't know. What's the climate gonna be like when we return to performing? Who knows? This year, next year, we don't know. So yeah. how do we prepare for that? You can't really, you just have to be open, flexible, and right. come up with options, you know? And of course, singing is the singing is the forbidden fruit of the arts. But um, even though your dancers make it look like they're not exerting energy, they are. And they're up there, you know, sweating with the oldies. And uh, again, yeah. it's another thing that, um, they're going to be wearing masks for a while, aren't they? Even in, in person. Well, yeah, you know, that's going to happen unless I have everybody vaccinated living in the same house for like a month, you know, still many questions unknown. Yeah. Are, are any of your dancers being affected by the Asian hate? You know, that's a really good question. And so far not affected in terms of being physically assaulted, some verbally, um, but affected here right afraid of walking out or afraid of what might happen to them i mean there is a large asian population in my group and frankly when i grew up in hawaii like my neighbors my mentors there are a lot of people of that sort of asian ethnicity that they feel like family to me so this one felt particularly close um and trying to wrap my head around it to see people that i really love and especially the elders of our group experienced anything that like what happened to that woman downtown who beat up that guy good yeah. for her by the way i mean that would be 
I don't know how I would handle it if someone that I, I loved had experienced that kind of vitriol. In, the, in, in all of these experiences, such as that, we are so lucky to be a part of a family that takes care of each other and that loves each other. And uh, to be able to go back to that family, but oh my goodness, uh, as we as we commemorate um, Asian uh, Americans, Pacific Islanders, um, it's just so important to keep the, the awareness up that uh, of course we all know that anybody that's other is right. a target. And right. um, I, I love I love your group. Of course you all have uh, every possible Asian <laughs> connection uh, with within your group. And um, it's just amazing, amazing to watch. So we know what's not next. What is next, Patrick? Um, well, I'm coming out with an album. <laughs> what? Yeah, and I, I subtitle it. If every other Cracker Kumu can come out with an album, why not this Cracker Kumu? <laughs> wow. So, yeah. <laughs> and in actuality, the show that's coming up in October is going to be, you know, based on the album, the title of which is Hanau, which means to be born. So in essence, it's like a rebirth after this pandemic. And where do we go from here? And, and of course, all the songs and music are were written and performed for dancing, for my halal specifically. <laughs> sure. Um, and so it's going to be an interesting kind of, since I don't really have a band, so to speak, in right. the audience, but now I do. So it will be a wonderful way to experience, I think, the group in a new way. Sounds kind of self-serving. Oh, you just came out with an album, and now you're going to do a show about your album? Right, well, of course you can. <laughs> You're the founder. You get to do whatever you want. Right. Damn it. Uh, yeah. But it's a new way of challenging myself as well. So have I'm, you started a recording? Yes, I have started it, and my first single has been released. Oh, listen I'll be on to all you. digital platforms. So. Right. Uh, and yes, and so I'm going to start rehearsing with that with smaller groups because normally we're a big group right 40 something yeah. people but now i'm going to do like three to five um and that's a new thing for me to just create smaller pieces so in a way it's i think it's different and it's engaging and i'm looking forward to it oh that's fantastic well we are going to um put a couple of excerpts from that concert up on SFGMC TV at the same time as as we are releasing this. And I just, I do want to tell you how great it is to be with a legend, because you are, you no, are. No, yeah, I'm taking a backseat to, to your legendary self. <laughs> no, no need. Um, what you've done for, for this city and for our country is, is amazing. And that what you all have done, uh, we've, that's not the only time we perform together. Right One now. other time, yeah, uh, yeah. And we'll, we will put it on the on the docket for when we come back. So I, please, and I'm gonna. I know. I know that it would be such a pleasure and so wonderful to come back and do something together that we knew was going to be joyous and yes. erase some of those really tough memories. That, I mean, for us to have a chorus sing for us and dance at a huge, wonderful um, experience. There. You know, I, I can't really promise, I can't promise that we'll learn Hawaiian, but. <laughs> you can just take that right off. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What you really? managed is beautiful. It really was. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Patrick, thank you for being with us today on the TV. Yeah, and uh, we yeah. wish you and all the dancers the best and so much love. And thank aloha. You. you and everybody else. Thank you. Give them all a big hug for me, all 100 or oh, 250. Will do. All right. Aloha.